everyone, I went ahead and installed macOS Venture on the oldest supported iMac that is available out there. Now, I will tell you the oldest supported iMac right now, it's not even that old. The 2017 iMac is now officially the lowest supported iMac that is supported with the latest beta of macOS. Now, I'm not 100% too hot sure how I feel about that, mostly because I feel like even like a 2014 iMac, even a 2012 iMac could have probably supported this to be honest. I did install macOS Monterey on my 2015 iMac and I had a great time with it. I still use it. It's great. With this 2017 iMac though, I feel like it handles macOS Ventura very, very well. Now, a big caveat, I did install the beta of this on a pretty much, you know, factory reset iMac. So keep that in mind. If you're pretty much dirty installing this over your previous version of macOS, it's not going to be as fast or as smooth as this version of macOS I have, in, you know, on Ventura. I will tell you, I installed a beta of macOS Monterey on my 2015 iMac, and it was not a smooth experience at all. And that was technically the lowest supported iMac at that time. And now this one is a faster machine. It's overall better, but it's very interesting to me that Apple Apple cut out the 2015 iMac. I feel like it could have easily supported it. Now, there are some other devices that are supported. The 2019 Mac Pro and newer, which is technically the only Mac Pro that's now supported. The Mac Studio is supported. The Mac Mini 2018 or newer are the only ones supported. And only the 2017 MacBook and MacBook Pros are supported as well. And the 2018 MacBook Air, the Retina MacBook Airs pretty much. Now, with this iMac, it took about an hour for it to fully install. So for it to go ahead and download the update, install it, it was about an hour. I didn't hear my fans ramp up on my iMac. I didn't hear anything like that at all. But again, this was after I factory reset it. So I'm sure if I was using this iMac every single day and going through that, I'm pretty sure there'd be a few more issues in that specific standpoint. Now, after I booted it up, it was perfectly easy to go through the setup. It didn't take too much time after. And I will tell you, performance-wise, I feel like it's about the same that what it was before. I didn't really feel like it really brought a crazy amount to the table as of right now for these Intel iMacs, mostly because a lot of these features that Apple brought over to these newer iMacs with the M1 chips and everything, I feel like Apple is really kind of forcing people to go and want those iMacs over these Intel ones. And there's a lot of articles out there explaining basically what features are not coming to these Intel iMacs. And to basically come down, I mean, there's a few of them. There's live captions that are not available within these Intel iMacs. Even the latest Intel iMac is not supported with this. The reference mode with sidecar, that is not supported. Emoji support and dictation mode is not supported. Those are just a few of them. I'm sure as more and more features come out from macOS Ventura, I'm sure there's probably going to be more features that are going to be left out for these specific devices. So those are some things that I'm not really looking forward to. Apple starting to go ahead and do the thing they've done like back in 2018 where they're really differentiating older Macs and newer ones. I'm not a fan of that, but I will tell you for this iMac to be the oldest supported one, I feel like it performs fairly well. You know, I was expecting this thing to be a buggy mess. There are definitely issues. I'm not using this 2017 iMac every single day, so I'm not going to be able to notice every single little thing, but I'm only looking for massive slowdowns, massive issues in or, you know, factory resets or boot loops or something like that. And I didn't really run into those on this first beta. So I think that's a really cool thing. On top of that, some of the new features like Stage Manager, I kind of think it's cool, but I don't really think I'm ever going to use this even on my personal Mac. I don't really plan on ever doing this or using it in the for the most part. And I do feel like with the small improvements here and there with the UI, there's really not too many things. I mean, there's some settings things that have changed, but for the most part, it's almost like macOS Monterey. It's definitely more like macOS Monterey than it is like its own operating system, you know, like completely different. I do appreciate a lot of these iMessage things they brought over. So you do have the ability of editing iMessages, I believe, and even unsending and unreading iMessages within iMessage too within your iMac. So I think that's another really cool thing. But beyond that, I think those are pretty much the main things. Like I said, performance seems to be about the same that I was getting on macOS Monterey. Monterey, but like I mentioned, it was factory reset it. It's not going to give you the same experience. But even more than that, no matter what, do not install a beta on your Mac. Mac OS betas, in my opinion, are some of the most sloppiest betas out there, and they will almost always give you really, really glitchy experiences. Even iOS betas are probably more stable than these things. So I would recommend staying on the official version of Mac OS. Don't go to this beta yet. It's not worth it. But I'm looking forward to what Apple's going to be bringing in the future updates. But that kind of covers it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That'll mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.